Section 41 of Monday Tales. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Tavarish. Monday Tales by Alphonse Dode. Translated by Marian McIntyre. The Mirror. In the north, on the bank of the Niemen, appeared one day a little creole, fifteen years of age, pink and white, as the blossoms of the almond tree. She had come from the land of hummingbirds, and the breath of love wafted her hither. True, the people of her island had said to her, Do not go, it is cold on the continent. When winter comes, it will kill you. But the little Creole did not believe there was such a thing as winter, and she did not know what cold was except as she had tasted it in sherbets. Besides, she was in love, and had no fear of death. And so it happened that she landed northward, among the fogs of the Niemen, with her fans, her hammock, mosquito netting, and a gilded latticed cage filled with the birds of her country. When old Father North saw this island flower the South had sent him in a sunbeam, his heart stirred within him for pity, and as he thought that the cold would make but a single mouthful of the maiden and her hummingbirds, he quickly lighted his great yellow sun and disguised himself in summer garment to receive the strangers. And so the Creole was deceived, and she mistook this northern heat, so harsh and oppressive, for constant warmth, and its dark evergreen for the verdure of springtime, and hanging her hammock in the park between two fir trees, she swung and fanned herself all day long. It is very warm in the north, she said with a smile, but one thing troubled her. Why in this strange country have the houses no verandas? Why those thick walls, those carpets and heavy hangings, those great porcelain stoves and huge piles of wood heaped up in the yards, those blue fox skins, lined cloaks and furs laid away at the bottom of wardrobes? What are all these things for? Poor child! she will soon learn. One morning on awaking, the little Creole feels a sudden chill pass through her. The sun has disappeared, and from the darkened overhanging sky which seems to have descended upon the earth during the preceding night, flakes are falling, forming a woolly covering, white and silent as that which falls from the cotton tree. Winter is come, winter is come. The wind whistles, the stoves roar. In their big cage with its gilded lattice, the hummingbirds chirp no longer. Their tiny wings, blue, rose-hued, ruby-red, and sea-green, are motionless now. It is pitiful to see them huddling against each other, their bodies benumbed and swollen with the cold such slender beaks and eyes like pinheads. Yonder in the park frost has eaten into the hammock, and it, too, shivers with the cold. The branches of the pine tree are sheathed in a covering that looks like spun glass. The little creole feels the cold and does not care to venture out of doors. Curled up snugly beside the fire like one of her birds, she whiles away the hours making sunshine of her memories. In the great fireplace a bright fire burns, and in its flames she seems to see all the scenes of her native land, the great quays basking in sunshine, the dripping sugar cane, and the floating golden dust of grains of maize. Then the afternoon siesta, the light blinds and straw mattings, and those starlit evenings, with fireflies and millions of tiny wings buzzing among the flowers and the tall meshes of mosquito netting. And while she dreams at the fireside, the winter days follow each other, growing shorter and gloomier. 
every morning a dead hummingbird is picked up in the cage soon there are but two of them left two tufted bits of green plumage that lean bristling against each other in a corner of the cage that morning the little creole herself was unable to rise like a turkish felucca lodged fast in a northern ice field she is griped and paralyzed by the cold the day is somber the chamber dreary the frost has curtained the window panes with a heavy covering like lustreless silk the city itself seems dead and through the silent streets the steam snow plough wheezes dolefully the creole lying in bed tries to divert herself by watching the flash from the spangles of her fan and passes hours gazing at herself in the mirrors of her native land fringed with tall indian plumes growing ever shorter ever gloomier the winter days follow each other surrounded by her lace curtains the little creole droops is wretched what saddens her most of all is to find that from her bed she cannot see the fire it seems to her that she has lost her country a second time from time to time she asks is there a fire in the room why of course there is little one the fireplace is aflame don't you hear the logs crackling the fir cones bursting oh look look but though she leans forward the flames are too far away for her she cannot see them and the thought renders her disconsolate but one evening as she lies there pensive and pale her head barely touching her pillow and her eyes ceaselessly directed towards the beautiful invisible flame her beloved approaches her bedside and lifts one of the mirrors lying upon the bed you want to see the flame mignon well then wait a moment and kneeling before the fire he tries to hold the mirror so that she shall receive a reflection of the magic flame can you see it no i see nothing how now i cannot see it yet then suddenly receiving full upon her face a flash of light that envelops her oh i see it cries the creole overjoyed and she dies with a smile on her lips two tiny flames leaping from the depths of her eyes end of section forty one